C-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-S-T-E-L-L-O-
The mouse fainted. The mouse... Oh, let's <laughs> just... I'm not going to take any, any chances. Now, before we go to Elsa Maxwell's party tonight, I'm going to see if you really know how to dance. In other words, I'll give you a lesson. Oh, you don't have to give me any lessons. I took lessons from Martha Murray. There's only one thing wrong. He taught me the woman's steps. Now, what's wrong with that? I'm the only wallflower in the history of dancing that uses the men's smoking room. Yeah, look, look, never mind that. Look, I'm going to teach you how to dance right now, right here. Right now, here? Let's, yeah, right here. Now, let's say that I'm a beautiful society girl. Now, this is my, uh, my first party, incidentally. I'm, I'm coming out tonight. Mm-hmm. You're the kind that ought to be pushed back in. Uh, now, look, <laughs> cut that out. I'm a beautiful girl. What's your name? Uh, what's the difference? Let's say my name is uh, 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 Laura Doom. Your name is what? Let's say Laura Doom. Oh, I know your sister. Nothing Doom. No, I never... <laughs> Will you please pay attention? Please. Wait a minute, listen to me, please. Now, here, here I stand... I, here I stand, all ready to dance. Now, I, I'm dressed in a, a, a strapless evening gown, and you ask me to dance. No, I can't dance with a girl with a bare back. Why not? Why, it always makes me feel like I'm patting a bald man in the head. Never mind that. Now, let's dance. Now, now here we go. Come on, now. Now, slide, glide, slide, glide, my Costello. That's wonderful. I like the way you dip. Who's dipping? My pants are falling down. Uh, <laughs> oh, isn't this lovely? We're dancing past the orchestra. <laughs> What's the matter? I danced too close to the trombone player. <laughs> I did! Ophthalmologists, cardiologists, gastroenterologists, otolaryngologists. Uh, no, folks, I'm not practicing tongue twisters. Just listing different kinds of doctors covered in the great cigarette survey recently made by three leading independent research organizations. Yes, they covered doctors in every branch of medicine. 113,597 doctors. From Mexico to Canada, from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Doctors in every state of the Union were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? And the brand most named was Camels. Rich, full-flavored Camels, the cigarette of costlier tobaccos. Superbly blended camels. The cigarette with the cool, throat-welcome mildness. Sure, doctors, like all you folks, smoke for pleasure. Camels' flavor and mildness register with their tastes and throats, just as with yours. Now, this impartial, factual evidence shows that... According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Alan Roth and the Camel Orchestra feature the popular rhythm favorite, Dr. Lawyer, Indian Chief. Come in, come in. Oh, Why, it's Mrs. Niles. What are you doing in New York? Oh, I just flew in from Hollywood. Flew in, hey? How did you come in on your broom? Uh, hey. <laughs> Costello, I'll have you know that when I arrived this morning, they rolled out the carpet. Oh, I wish you had been there. What for? Then they could have rolled out the barrel. <laughs> Scramble it. I have no time to argue with you, Costello. Oh, I'm dead tired from my plane trip. I'm bushed. Bushed? You look more like something that's been treed. <laughs> I'll have you.
you know that I just came from the beauty parlor. Why? Wow. This beauty treatment <laughs> Costello, this beauty treatment cost me two hundred dollars. And already I've been taken for Lana Turner and Rita Hayworth. You've also been taken for two hundred dollars. <laughs> Stella, will you behave yourself? Well, leave Mrs. Niles alone. Yes, you little pipsqueak. An another remark like that and I'll kick you out of this studio kit and caboodle. Mrs. Niles, you may kick my kit, but don't you dare lift your foot to my caboodle. <laughs> Quiet, Costello. And uh, Mrs. Niles, will you go with Costello to uh, Elsa Maxwell's party tonight, Why, please? Why, I wouldn't be seen with this uncouth, fat little assassin. <laughs> I wish you hadn't said that, Mrs. Niles. We could be very dear friends if you would have faith in me. Have faith in you? Everybody has faith in me. Even my dog has faith in me. Oh, dog faith Costello, eh? <laughs> Please, Mrs. Niles, won't you go with Costello? Oh, Come on. very well. I'll go with Costello on one condition. I insist that he drive me to the party. All right, I'll drive you to the party, but you have to bring your own harness. <laughs> in my life. Well, Costello, at least I'd try to get you a woman to take to the party, didn't I? Try to get me a what? A woman. You want a bet? I, well, I... <laughs> Come in. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. Costello. Costello, it's uh, Professor Melonhead. Well, what are you doing here? I'll tell you what I'm doing here, Abbott. I just read in this newspaper here that Costello was going to Elsa Maxwell's house party. It's an outrage. I will not tolerate it. After all, I have jurisdiction over this. I happen to be Miss Maxwell's right-hand man. Ha, I'm her major domo. You look like her shiny domo. You... <laughs> there you go, Costello, making remarks about my bald head again. I'm proud of my bald head. My head looks like a baby's. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Like a baby cereal bowl with shredded wheat around the edge. Well, <laughs> Melonhead, why do you object to Costello going to Elsa Maxwell's party? Tonight? Why, if Costello were to appear at Miss Maxwell's party, it'd be a catastrophe. It would a be... A cat what is free? No, 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 no. A catastrophe. Cat I'll explain a catastrophe. Costello, suppose your cat had kittens in your hat, what would that be? A miracle. My cat's name is Jake. Hey, uh... <laughs> Don't worry about Costello at the party. Please, I I'll take care of him. All right, Abbott. I warn you, Costello... Don't partake of any edibles or viands until the butler announces dinner. Well, who? The butler, the butler. Look, I'll explain the butler. At your house, how do you know when it's time to eat? When my mother takes the iron bars off the dining room door. <laughs> I hope your wife, Mother Hayden, ain't gonna do the cooking tonight at Elsa Maxwell's. No. She makes the world's worst pancakes. Now, never mind about... Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't want you to make any more remarks about my wife's pancakes. Well, In fact, Costello, the next time you mention the word pancakes... I'm going to take this newspaper and hit you over the head with it. You mean every time I mention the word pancakes? Oh, you... <laughs> cut it out! Cut it out! I mean, after all, I, I, I certainly don't like, like your wife's... Uh, what? Th that stuff, anyway. <laughs> you don't like what stuff? I don't like that... that the word you want me to say if I say... What you, word? You're what word? hit me on the head if I say it. What word? Pancakes? <laughs> I'm telling you, man, that hurts. That hurts, Melon. That, that hurts, That huh? hurts when you hit me on the head. <laughs> you on the head because you said something you're not supposed to say. Well, I won't say that word no more. What word? That pep, 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 pep. <laughs> uh, patty cake? <laughs> you thought I was going to say pancakes. <laughs> Don't ever say it again. I won't say the word no In more. In fact, you should never eat them again. Eat pancakes? <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. melon head. What? Down the end of the page. All right. <laughs> What? I'm not going to say any more about your, your wife's cooking, uh, that, that stuff she makes. Why? You know why? Why? I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> why? Because there was a war once. A war? What do you know about the war? Plenty about the war, and it's got something to do with what you were talking about when you were hitting me on the head. Is that so? Yes. This war, I was going over. I had to go. And then I was going to fight for our country over there. Of course. And I was right where the bullets were the thickest. Where the bullets were the thickest? Where was that? Underneath the ammunition Didn't truck. Know. <laughs> Now, be serious. And finally, I come up out of there, and there was a bullet coming right at me. A bullet coming at you. And it hit me. A bullet hit you? Right in the heart. Right in the heart. And before I left home, my father gave me a good book. Yes. And he told me to put it by my heart. The good book. And you know what saved me from being killed? The good book, of course. Oh, no, one of your wife's pancakes. Oh. <laughs> yeah.
It's an amazing instrument, intricate, sensitive, a miracle of chemistry, physics, and all the assorted sciences. And you own it. It's your own T-Zone. That's T for taste and T for throat. And it's also the greatest cigarette testing machine in the world, the most critical laboratory for any cigarette. So just try Camels on your T-Zone. See how your taste responds to the rich, full flavor of Camels' superbly blended and costlier tobaccos. See how your throat reacts to Camels' cool mildness. Perhaps, as with millions of other smokers, your T-Zone, too, will report that Camels suit you to a T. Oh, and another thing. Did you know that when three leading independent research organizations put the question, what cigarette do you smoke, to 113,597 doctors all over America, the brand most named was Camels? Yes, that's so. According to a recent nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. And here's Camel's lovely Amy Arnell, the girl with personality. When Madame Pompadour was on a ballroom floor, said all the gentlemen, obviously. The Madame has the cutest personality. And think of all the books about Du Barry's looks. It was it made her the toast of Perry. She had a well-developed personality. What did Romeo see in Juliet? Oh, Pierrot in Pirat. Oh, Jupiter in Juno. You know. And when Salome danced and had the boys in trance, no doubt it must have been easy to see that she knew how to use her personality. What did Harry J. see in Betty G. Or Garson G. in Gable C. Or Bing and Bob in Dot L'Amour to you? I've got the grable grace, I've got a grable face, except I've had it much longer than she. Gee, if I only had her personality, personality. Boy, gee, this is some party, Costello. What a crowd, eh? Hello, boys. Costello, it's Elsa Maxwell. <laughs> Costello, do you realize that this is the one and only Elsa Maxwell? Yes, here I am, in the flesh. Whose is it? You better I... give it back. You're stretching it all out of shape. <laughs> Don't you talk to me that way, you baby bunion. Baby bunion? Yes, you're a little corny. <laughs> Don't, don't mind him, Elsa. Is there anything we can do to help uh, entertain your guests tonight? Yes, I'd like to have you boys put on a play. I have a wonderful vehicle for you, Mr. Ab Mr. Abbott. And uh, what about a vehicle for me? A vehicle for you, Castello? How about a garbage truck? <laughs> hey, you know, Abbott, this dame's got better jokes than I got. Uh, Elsa, have you something in mind for us? I, I know you have to produce some big Broadway shows. And... Oh, yes, but I've been on the stage, you know. I've also appeared in a few Western pictures. In fact, I, I played a regular Western girl. I shot from the hip. From away up there? <laughs> shut up, shut up, and listen to Elsa. Oh, that's all right, bud. I think Costello's only pulling my leg. Pulling it? I couldn't even lift it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, boys, you know, I've written a little sketch that we can do tonight. It's called Anthony and Cleopatra. It's a lovely play, Costello. You will be Anthony, and I will be Cleopatra. The siren of the Nile. You sound more like a foghorn on the Hudson. <laughs> you don't understand, Costello. Elsa will be Cleopatra, the most enchanting lady on the Nile. Yes, Costello. In this play, I am a sorceress. Sorceress? You're a whole set of dishes. <laughs> what a lovely play, Costello. I fall madly in love with you. I get you in my clutches. Yes. But you break away. Yes. Again, I get you in my clutches. Yes. And again, you break away. Looks like my brakes are okay, but my clutch is slipping. <laughs> Cut it out, Costello. Let's get on with the play. Melonhead, will you set the scene? Okay, Abbott. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we bring you a drama of Antony and Cleopatra, starring Elsa Maxwell, Bud Abbott, and Lou Costello, entitled How the Terrible Snake Killed Cleopatra, or Costello Makes an Asp of Himself. <laughs> As the scene 
opens, Julius Caesar and Mark Antony are walking along the banks of the Nile. Julius Caesar speaks. Ah, oh, Anthony, isn't this a wonderful country? Yes, Julius. There is no country in the world as beautiful as egg wiped. Egg wiped? Wait a minute, Costello. Where do you see egg wiped on the script? It's right here in the script. What do egg you mean? Egg wiped. Egg wiped. E-G-Y-P-T. Egg wiped. Ah, no, you don't. That's Egypt. <laughs> That's, That's Egypt. Egypt. You read the straight lines, kid. I'll get the last. All right, uh, quiet. <laughs> ah, Anthony, we are approaching Cleopatra's camp. Oh, two goes there. God, tell Cleopatra that Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony are here. Which one is Anthony? I am. Mr. Anthony, I have a problem. <laughs> I've been going with a girl for eight years, and just last minute, just week... Just a minute, just a minute. You got the wrong program. <laughs> this is a play about Sahara. That's my girl's name, Sahara. Get out of here! Come on, Anthony. Oh, look, there's Cleopatra's scow lying at anchor. Let's get aboard. Okay. Oh, get off me, you fool. <laughs> come on, Costello. Let's get on with the play. You come here. You come here as Mark Anthony, the great lover. Take Elsa Maxwell in your arms and read your line. Okay. Ah, oh, Cleopatra, at last we are together, my proud beauty. But Anthony, I am not proud. You're no beauty either. Uh, uh, never mind. Stella, <laughs> take her in your arms. Yes, Anthony. Put your arms around my waist. I'll have to make three trips. There. <laughs> now, with your arms around me, Anthony, what are you thinking? I'm thinking how wonderful it would be to have this much butter. <laughs> You should talk. Why don't you take that flower out of your lapel and wear it in your vest? Why should I wear my flower in my vest? Be nearer the pot. <laughs> <laughs> come, 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 you two. You're supposed to be in love. Yes, Anthony. Remember that old adage, all the world loves a lover. Oh, yeah? Then why do they have cops in Central Park? But Mark, my sweet, this night was made for love. There are lovers everywhere. Listen to that couple on yonder bench. I'm getting a divorce. You're not going to treat me like your first six husbands. I only had five husbands. You had six. Five. Six. There you go, counting that midget again. <laughs> come, come, Mark Anthony. Sit beside me on the throne, and I will stretch one of my slave girls to entertain you. Enter, slave. Did thou summon me, O oh queen? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Salome. Kindly attend to the wishes of our guests. Oh, Mark Anthony. I am here to serve you. Oh, what can I do for you? Come here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> Please, Mark Anthony. The queen will be jealous. Oh, kind sir, is there uh, anything I can bring you? You already brought it, babe. Come on here and kiss your poor old father. <laughs> Costello, will you leave that girl alone? Yes, Mark Anthony. This is an insult. You are making love to this slave while I am here. Who wants a local when you can catch an express? <laughs> Get out of here. Away. I, Cleopatra, will dance for Mark Antony. I will do my famous fan dance. You do a fan dance? Yes. What do you use? Windmills? Uh, <laughs> let Miss Maxwell do her fan dance, will you please? I'd rather see her do a hula dance. Oh, you think I could do a hula? hula? Oh, you could do a hula, certainly. All you do is walk out on the floor fast, stop quick, and let nature take its course. Costello, uh, <laughs> will you stick to the play? Now, now comes the big love scene. As the barge floats down the river Nile under the Egyptian moonlight, Miss Maxwell is sitting on your lap. Oh, goody, goody. Well, Costello, here I am on your lap. Costello, speak to me. Where are you? I'm this grease spot on the chair. Uh, now, as the slave girls sprinkle roses around your feet, you take Miss Maxwell in your arms, mind you, in your arms, and you kiss her. I can't do that, Abbott. Miss Maxwell and I, we can be nothing but friends. Oh, please. Costello. Please, Costello. Don't say that. <laughs> Call me anything but just a friend. I'm afraid I can't. Tut -tut. You're just a friend. <laughs> Here, I'll put my arms around you. Now am I just a friend? Yes, you're just a friend. I'll put my cheek against yours. <laughs> now, what do you want to call me? <laughs> You're just a friend. <laughs> then I will kiss you. <laughs> now, am I just a friend? I won't tell you till you let me up. <laughs> well, after that, 
kiss, I can't call you friend. Not after a kiss like that. Then, what will you call me? Grandma. <laughs> Grandma! Grandma! Abbott and Costello will be back for Camel Cigarettes in just a moment. And now, tonight's salute to the men on the armed forces who won through to victory. Tonight we hail the 99th Division, heroes of the Remagen Bridgehead. Since the beginning of the war, the makers of camels have sent more than 150 million free camels to our fighting men overseas. But now with the mobilization in progress, free camels are sent to servicemen's hospitals instead. This week the camels go to Veterans Hospital, Marion, Illinois. U.S. Army Cushing General Hospital, Framingham, Massachusetts, National Naval Medical Center, Bethesda, Maryland, U.S. Marine Hospital, Savannah, Georgia, and Veterans Hospital, Northport, Long Island, New York, in your honor, men of the 99th Division. <laughs> Camel broadcasts go out to the United States twice a week, a rebroadcast to practically every area in the world where our men are stationed, and to our good neighbors in Central and South America. And now, here are Bud Abbott and Lou Costello with the final word. Well, Costello, this is our last night in good old New York City. Yes, Abbott, but this is not our last broadcast. In fact, we're going to do four more broadcasts from Hollywood. No, no, not that! Get these guys off the air! How much you guys stand? Oh, this is the Oh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Just a minute! Uh, why don't you go out and take a long walk on a short pier, old boy? Oh, get this corny guy with that broken-down joke. What's the matter with that joke? That was one of my father's jokes. What are you, one of your mother's? <laughs> Good night, folks. <laughs> Good night, Patty and Carol. Good night, everybody. Be sure to tune in next week for another great Abbott and Costello show brought to you by Camel Cigarettes. And remember, try Camels in your T-zone. See if they don't suit your taste, your throat, to a T. C-A-M-E-L-S If you smoke a pipe, it'll really be a red-letter day when you switch to that big red tin, Prince Albert. Yes, more pipes smoke Prince Albert than any other tobacco in the world. It's crimp cut to burn cool, and it gets a special no-bite treatment that takes out all the parch and sting but leaves in all the rich, mellow, wonderful flavor. So switch to Prince Albert today. Saturday night, be sure to listen to Prince Albert's Grand Ole Opry. You'll hear Red Foley, Grand Ole Opry's sensational new romantic singer. Remember, Grand Ole Opry, Saturday night on NBC with Red Foley. Perhaps you've seen pitiful pictures of starving people in your newspaper recently. These scenes are being repeated over and over throughout Europe and Asia. Many of these people, especially the children, will die without our help. You can help by avoiding all food waste, by preserving food through home gardening and canning, and by giving canned food and money to your local emergency food collection. Share a meal, save a life. Be sure to listen at this very same time next week for the Abbott and Costello Show for Camel Cigarettes, which will come to you from Hollywood. Thursday night is All-Star Night on NBC. Stay around now for Rudy Valley over most of these stations. This is Bert Parks in New York wishing you all a pleasant good night for Camel. <laughs> This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.